continue my series on astral projection. This will be astral projection part 10, and I will take a moment out to focus on guides. And although I've talked about guides before, I would like to include them in this series because they are so essential to experiences in the astral plane. But before I talk about guides and get into this, I wanted to share an experience I just had not too long ago. Normally, I would just do a video about the experience. And so that would be the video. I would tell you what happened. But unfortunately, I don't remember enough to be able to share the experience with you and feel as if you would even, I don't know if the word is understand it. I mean, I, I, I just honestly, I don't think understanding it is the point. I think the point is, is that I don't remember anything except a name. And I remember I was with someone, but so before I get into the guide, talking about guides, I do want to share this part with you because perhaps it'll be helpful to you. I know that for the last few days, it's just been really tough for me. And I think it's been tough overall for a lot of people because of what's been going on in the world and things that have been happening. I've certainly felt the stress. Um, I have a tendency to take on other people's emotions at times and feel that and feel the, you know, if the world is, is not in a good place, I have a tendency to really, really feel bad. It really takes me sometimes to a dark place. And today, I again, I just wasn't feeling great. And I laid down... Um, after finishing up work and I was just gonna just lay there. I was, I was just upset in my mind and it was just really, really, a really not good. And there's no way that I thought for one moment that I would go anywhere. Now I, I didn't have any music on. I didn't have anything on, didn't have any, um, storm sounds like which is what I, I usually like to have on I didn't have any of that stuff on uh today when I laid down I just laid down I just laid there and um again I wasn't thinking about anything in particular except for just I don't know I guess in a sense being kind of negative because of because of what's been happening in the world I guess and when I felt the wave come over me and again, for those of you who have followed me on my Beyond Body experiences, I can sense it before it comes. I can sense it like a wave. It's like a tsunami or whatever. It just comes. And when it comes, like a surfer, I like ride the wave of energy or whatever it is. But like I said, it's usually very powerful. This wasn't that powerful. I could feel it coming. And as it came... I felt that I had a choice at that moment. I could go or I could stay. I didn't have to. And I remember considering it going, well, number one, I thought, wow, even when I'm in this place inside, even when I feel this bad, they still want to take me on a trip? Really? And it was interesting because I, I kind of when I felt that I immediately thought, well, this is an escape, so I'll let them take me wherever. So I just said, okay, just take me. And I remember in my mind, I was saying, just, you know, take me, just take me. I don't know where, doesn't matter to me. Just take me someplace where I can escape this world for just a few moments. And I remember that the motion or the acceleration that I always talk about wasn't that great. We didn't move very far. And then I remember I felt that sense that I kind of dipped downward and then 
I think I came up again. And again, I was in the darkness, so I couldn't see exactly what was going on. And then, of course, as always, the darkness lifts and my surroundings reveal themselves. However, when I opened my eyes, when this thing was over, I couldn't remember anything about what had happened. The only thing I could remember was there was a young man and he had blondish hair. His hair looked like I thought it was styled as if it was from like the 80s or something. It was really weird. I remember at one point asking him his name. His name was Winstead. That's what he said, but he said it in this way that was really weird. The tone of his voice, the sound of his voice sounded strange, but I do remember him saying his name was Winstead. When I asked him what world this was that I was in, he said something, but I don't remember what he said the world was. I am so sorry. I cannot recall the name of this place I was in, and I honestly can't remember anything about it. But of course, as I like to share everything with you on this channel, even things like this, I will tell you this happened. I don't remember enough to really be able to share something substantial with you on this other than this person's name. That's it. He was blonde. He was in his 20s. His name was Winstead. He looked like he was in he had a hairstyle from the 80s. Other than that, I have no idea about this person. So anyway, that was my experience. I've shared it. Now, I'd like to take a moment to talk about guides. And one of the reasons why I love talking about guides is I believe that our guides are our greatest resource when we leave our bodies. They can obviously guide us to all these different places that are literally beyond our imagination, but also they are a great resource for just wisdom. You know, you can ask them questions and they will give you their thoughts on different things. So it, that is an amazing thing. But one of the questions I, I see a lot is people will ask, well, is there a way for me to reach out to my guide before I've reached that higher vibrational frequency or I leave my body? Is there a way to communicate with them? Well, I believe in our conscious minds walking around, the way that guides communicate with us is through our instincts. If something feels right or if something feels wrong and in that way, they assist us. Obviously, if something feels wrong and we do it anyway, or we go against our instincts, normally things don't turn out great. On the other end, if something feels right and we do it, then usually it turns out to be a wonderful thing. I guess one good example is me creating this channel. I created this channel because it felt right. And I believe at that point, my guides were reaching out to me through my instincts. So that's it. But, you know, another interesting thing and another thing that I've seen before is people will ask, is it possible for my guide to be able to help me to leave my body? My answer to that and at least in my view, is no, not really. They can't help you to leave your body. That's something that you have to do. Now, once you get out of your body, they can assist you with different things. But leaving your body is a thing that you have to generate yourself. And so they probably would not be able to assist you with that. But they are obviously there to assist you once you're out. And if you ask for it, the one thing you have to remember about guides, they are, again, a very powerful resource. But if you don't ask for their help, if you don't reach out to them, they will stay in the background invisible, just watching over you until you ask. You have to ask first. And then 
they will assist you. This is the thing. You are the one that has the power. And as much as that could scare, I think, some people, because power can be scary, because when you have power, that means you have to kind of take responsibility along with that. But I believe it's true. Again, they're there to assist you, but you are the one that is in control. Now, one of the last things I wanted to talk about with guides, and you know, I may do another part to this where I talk about some of the places my guides have taken me, even though I've talked about it before. I love talking about it because I think it's really cool. But people wonder where guides come from. Who are they? Where do they come from? Are they like these angelic beings from some kind of version of heaven that come to assist us in this world or what is it? But I think my opinion is that guides are simply an expanded version of us. We exist on several different levels. There are an infinite number of versions of us. And a guide is, I guess, sort of an expanded version of us that understands everything. They've been around since before time began and will continue on forever. They get it and they are there to help us. I guess you could think, or at least I think, it kind of makes sense that these beings that are there that love us unconditionally are a part of us. They are actually us. In a sense, I guess I'm saying that (laughs) we love ourselves unconditionally on some level. And as you listen to this, I want you to understand that When I say you, I mean you, the being that is infinite, infinitely powerful, infinitely knowledgeable. Just, I want you to remember that. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to end this here. It's been a very strange night. I, I didn't even know if I, again, would be making this video and I apologize if it feels a little I don't know disjointed or um, doesn't sound wonderful like I said I've, I've had a very challenging challenging day thank you so much for coming on this journey with me and until next time take care